All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends, and let us do the good work for today. Uh, you know, uh, one of the funny things I always witness in in the work I do on YouTube is the Muslim comments, and I find it sometimes hilarious. So today we are going to review a comment made by a Muslim woman, and I can tell from her name that she is Turkish. Miss. Uh, Give me a second. Let us fix the view so we can see the comment. All right. Her name is Miss Der Diraya Osman. Osman. So she is an old man girl. She said the following. In the moment, two hours and two and one. I was talking about hypocrites and hypocrisy, how Jesus spoke about those who they are like the Muslims today, who pray in the corners just to make people see them, who go and climb in the top of a taxi and he start praying in the middle of Manhattan just because he wants to show everybody that he is a praying to Allah. That is the hypocrisy. While Jesus says, you go to your closet and you pray. So she said, there are hypocrite people in every religion, not just in Islam. If Muslims do something wrong, then the Muslims are to blame, not Islam. In addition, I have only seen a few Christians who really care about their religion. Muslims are the only ones who really take their holy book and God words seriously and practice it. You cannot. I don't know why she stopped there. Why she cannot what? Mm, not sure. So I said to her, please watch my coming video, which is going to be respond to you, and don't forget to laugh. You know the funny that you are coming from Turkey, and Turkey number one business there is prostitution, night clubs. Actually, uh, 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 the Mufti of Turkey he said something just last month. He said, uh, "Well." <laughs> Your electricity and your government is covered by nightclub and prostitutions. And that made them many uh, angry from saying the truth. So you are a Turkish and you are talking about, I remember when I was in England, we have two Turkish girls who come to our classroom. When they are not there, the classroom have only eight people. When they are there, our classroom is like 40. And even the teacher, he keep drinking water because their clothes is like a bikini. Their breast is coming out. Their short is a bikini. And I, I don't know what to say. I mean, or, or, or you can tell me. So when you speak about Muslims to blame, mm, so why you are saying a few Christians, they follow, and we Muslims, we follow. You Muslims, you don't take your religion seriously, and I will prove it today, easy and fast. In Islam, music is haram. Haram mean unlawful. And the one who play music or listen to music, he will go to hell. How many of you have and listen to music every day? Can you find me one Muslim who don't listen to music? Look what your prophet, he said. That he said that you Muslims, he spoke about the Muslims now, not about Christians. He says, people among my nation will drink wine and call it in other names. And actually, this is exactly what they do in Saudi Arabia. So Muhammad here uh, looked like he is, uh, you know, uh, speaking some honesty about what's happening. Uh, you know, in Saudi Arabia, they said to you, this is a beer, but would add alcohol. It's a beer. What do you mean without alcohol? They drink perfume. They call it perfume, but they drink it as alcohol. So from my people, people who, my manish, and people who drink wine, but they will give it different names. And they play musical instrument. And even they will have singing girls for them. How many of you did not listen to singers? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> according to your prophet, if you listen to a singing girls, Allah will make you a monkey and a pig. 
So how many Muslims based in Muhammad teaching are serious Muslims? And how many Muslims according to Muhammad teaching, not me, Allah will turn them into pigs and monkeys? I think here we need a, a moment of silence because I feel sad for the Muslims. If Allah really, if Muhammad is a truthful and this is what will happen, well, Muslims, I feel sorry for you. Here we go. Monkeys and pigs. Who's saying that? Your prophet, not me. I don't call people monkeys and pigs. And I don't believe in such a thing. But your prophet is the one saying that if you listen to music or listen to musical instrument or even to singing girls mm -hmm. Allah will make the earth swallow you and you will come out from the earth again in different shape a pig and a monkey I don't know which one you prefer but you can pick up one I'm not sure if Allah will give you a choice maybe Allah will say hey what do you want we have two choices. You want a pig or a monkey? Which one you choose to be? So when you say that we Muslims, we take Islam seriously, Hamas people listen to music, Al-Qaeda listen to music and watch TV and watch movies, even Osama bin Laden. Actually, if we go and see what all Muslims do today, you will see there's no Muslims left peace Muhammad. Not only that, the one who live between non-Muslims is not a Muslim. Am I making things up? No, this is from the Quran. This is from the Quran and this is from the Hadith. Muhammad said, and I will show you from the Quran too. The message of Allah, S-A-W-S, is like, this is like a brand, you know, S-A-W-S, like, you know, uh, you know, Lamborghini 500, etc. So Muhammad is a is an is the only, he's the S-O-W-S something. Uh, send an expedition uh, etc some people thought a uh, sort protection by having rescues to protections uh, sorry recourse uh, for uh, prostration and we are hastily, hastily killed uh, when the prophet uh, Allah heard of Allah heard say this he says he ordered half of the blood wit to be paid for them saying I am not responsible for any Muslim who stay among the polytheist they said why Allah messenger he said their fires should not be visible to one another <laughs> actually he is the translation he is, is a big fat liar the translator it doesn't say I am not responsible he says a Muslim who live between them he is not of my people I mean, they lie in translation left and right. Let us see different translator. Hold on. Just to show you, we cannot we cannot trust what they say. You know. Here we go. You see the same story, different translator. Look what he said. I am free from every Muslim that he live amongst the adulterers, which mean I wash my hands from him. Not I'm not responsible. There's a huge difference between I am free. I wash my hands from you if you live between the mushrikeen and saying I am not responsible different hadith the message of Allah says any Muslim who stays among the polytheist does not belong to me I mean how clear we can make it so if you are a Muslim and you live in New York oh sir sorry to say to you you are not a Muslim no more if you are a Muslim who live in England, you are not a Muslim no more. If you are a Muslim who live in Australia, in Finland, in Denmark, in, 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 and you are desperate to try to come to Western countries, yet the Christian countries are bad. According to Muhammad, any Muslim who stay among the polytheist, according to Muhammad, we are the polytheist, does not belong to me. So you belong to who? You belong to who? If we go in the Quran, 
we will find the Quran saying clearly that a Muslim who became a Muslim, he should leave the land of the Kuffar. This is Quran. Unless you want to say to me, Quran is, you know, chapter 2, verse number 218. And, you know, a chapter, uh, let us see chapter 4, verse number 89, because this is a very nice chapter. Very beautiful, very peaceful. Their desire that you should dis disbelieve as they have disbelieved all alike therefore take not from among them friends until they flee their homes in Allah way okay they flee to where they flee to the land of Muslims so we cannot take them as a friends anyone even if he claimed to be a Muslim we cannot take him as a friend unless he flee to the land of Muslims in Allah way but if they turn back which means if they leave Islam size them and kill them and by the way the Muslim they say to you where in the Quran it says you should kill somebody for being apostate it's in front of you but if they turn back then size them and kill them whenever you find them and take not from them among them friends or helpers So according to you, you Muslims are the one who take Islam seriously, but you live in the Islamic countries or you live in England or in Canada or USA. So here we see the hypocrisy. You Muslims, none of you is a Muslim based on the Quran and based on the Hadith. Unless you want to say to me that your prophet is an idiot. He do not know what he's talking about and you know Islam better than him. I don't think this is a scenario. Not only that. <clears throat> Oh. When a Muslim speak about hypocrisy, I mean, Islam is the biggest cult of hypocrisy. And I will explain to you. Not only you have to immigrate and leave the country which is not Islamic, you cannot take even your families as a friends if they are not Muslims. Let us see. Oh. The Quran is full of verses saying that you cannot take non Muslims as a friend. Chapter 3, verse number 28. And here, by the way, awliya is not only in friends, uh, protectors. So if you live in a country where the, the police of this country is not Islamic, you are, a, you are not a Muslim. Chapter 3, verse number 28. Chapter 5, verse number 51. I mean, by the way, there's many. There's chapter 4, verse number 139. But I'm not reading all of them. All right? Like, you you Muslims cannot take the unbelievers as guardian or friends. Only you can take from the believers. And this is mean you cannot, you cannot do anything. You cannot live. If your boss at work is a non-Muslim, that means you cannot work. You have to quit. If the police in your country you live in are not Muslims, you have to quit. If the law in the country you live in is not Sharia law, you have to quit. You have to leave. So you are talking about hypocrisy. Do you do you practice Sharia law in Turkey? Like now you have Erdogan who give us big speeches about Islam in Turkey. This guy is the biggest garbage ever you can imagine. He speak too much about Islam, but he do nothing for Islam. Number one business in Turkey is nightclubs, prostitutions. Is, uh, is, is the wine forbidden in Turkey? Is the beer forbidden in Turkey? Is the whiskey is forbidden in Turkey? Is nightclubs are closed? So here we go. We have Islamic party, but nobody in, in Turkey want Islam. So why you don't have Islam if you are not hypocrite? Who is, who is holding you? The German, the American? So Erdogan, he go and he speak, Alhamdulillah, Aman, Labbi, Aman, Aman, we believe in Allah, Al Allah, it's a big speeches. But in the ground, the story is different. Who is holding you from Islam, from establishing Islamic law in Egypt? 
or in Algeria or in Morocco or in Libya or in Syria or in Iraq or 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 where you, you don't have it because you you are hypocrites if you really are Muslims then why you don't why you choose a law other than Allah law to be ruling you in chapter 5 verse number 51 it says it clearly take not Christians and Jews as a friends or protectors the biggest supporter for Al-Qaeda in the world is the Prince of Qatar yet he have the biggest base for American in Qatar the biggest country for Islam in the world which is supposedly the most holy land for them is Saudi Arabia yet just few days ago we have more than 700 soldiers Marines they landed in Saudi Arabia to protect Saudi Arabia when Saddam Hussein attacked Kuwait you Muslims you came to George Bush kissing his whatever asking him for protection but the Quran says take not take not Christians and Jews either as a friends or protectors so where are you where are you the one who protect you is the kuffar the one who make you safe actually if now USA take their protection from all those Islamic countries Iran will eat them alive Iran is a Shia country and they are very powerful compared to those Arab neighbors we are Arab we are so good in eating kapsa rice with meat that's it so if Iran go those are Persian you know we are no match for the Persian everybody knows so if the Persian attack the Arab what the Arab will do they will cry to their mommy Donald Trump few weeks after Trump was elected Saudi Arabia brought more than 60 king and president who they are Muslims to Saudi Arabia so Trump he can school them they sit in the front of him like a chickens and he was schooling them this is exactly what happened and now all of you you live by the mercy of his majesty the currency of Turkey go down or up based in a phone call of Trump Trump he call Erdogan the currency go up Trump he get upset he make a tweet a tweet just a tweet he don't even fart it's just a tweet your currency go down and two tweet of Trump actually I remember two months ago make you lose 40% of your currency value so Islam is not practical and this is why you Muslims decide to be hypocrite and not to follow Islam Islam is not practical in every way in every mean are you getting the point why you are not practicing Islam musical is haram okay do you have a ring in your phone do your phone ring according to muhammad the ring of the phone is the instrument of the devil you don't believe me let me show you just type the word music in english just to show you i will not use arabic this time okay music here we go The bell is the musical instrument of shaitan, even bell. So if you do you have a bell in your home? Do your neighbor use the bell when they come to your house? Well, you are, let me give you the good news. Shaitan is playing with the bell. He is in your home. <laughs> this is your prophet. So Islam is not only a cult. It is a stupid cult. Muhammad, he put too much, you know, like an obstacle in front of you to live. Because the whole purpose of Muhammad, those, those obstacles, is, is to be sure you will not listen to non-Muslims who they will show you how silly and how false Muhammad is. Muhammad in the Quran, he said, that if you sit with people and they are, you know, attacking the Quran, uh, leave them until they finish the topic. What? This is when Muhammad, he was not victorious. At that time, it was okay to live between the kuffar. But now he have his land, so why you want to live between the kuffar? So you who live in countries 
where people they speak against Islam according to your prophet you should leave those countries chapter 6 verse number 68 So why you stay in the West? Do you watch TV? Watching TV is haram. Is watching TV permitted in Islam, brother? <laughs> the answer no. <laughs> so what do you what do you mean about uh, about uh, uh, hypocrites and we Muslims you follow? The founder of Hamas, he have TV. Go in the month of Ramadan. Now we have at the end, like at the last day of Ramadan, supposedly. Go and see what is the what is the the movies they play in TV in Ramadan in Muslim countries. Billy dancing, women are naked, drinking, dancing, singing. This is what do you do? And yet you are talking about we are the most people who take our God words seriously. No, you don't. Do you take hair from your face, lady? What was her name? Diria? Do you take hair from your face? Because let me tell you the bad news. If you take hair from your face, according to your prophet, you are cursed by Allah. So you tell me how many Turkish women in Turkey, they don't take hair from their face every day. And not only that. If you put a perfume and you go out of your door, according to Muhammad, you are, excuse my language, not me who says that, you are a whore. So you, do you take really your religion, religion seriously? I never saw a woman, she don't take hair from her face. Hmm? So what are you talking about? Can a Muslim look at this question? And this is the answer, uh, fatwa number 13363. Can a Muslim settle in a kafir countries for a sake of better life? The answer, summary, no. No. The basic principle that it is not a principle for the country. Uh, 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 permissible for the, for the Muslim to settle among the mushrikeen. That's it. So what are you talking about? I mean, I cannot find one Muslim he practice Islam. Though actually, even ISIS they aren't practicing Islam no more. They are singing. They have a music. Even when they make a video supposedly for Allah, they have a music. When Muhammad he made it clear that the music is haram. Then you are talking about hypocrisy and we Muslims, we take it seriously. What seriously? You know, if not the shame, I can open YouTube right now and I can type just one word. Just one word in, the, in, the, in, in YouTube and you will see what we will see. You will be so proud. And let me tell you something. I am coming from the Middle East where it's ruled by Muslims. The judges are corrupt. The president, the kings, the princes are corrupt. The police are corrupt. Even the guy who you buy vegetable from him is a corrupt. You go to the butcher to buy beef, you find later that it's a donkey meat. And you are talking about we are the most people who take our God words seriously. Uh, maybe this is why I explain. Uh, why you are corrupt because you take it seriously maybe same time while muhammad forbidding people from listening to music and says allah will make them pigs and monkeys for listening to music he himself he have a dancers in his house singing for him for he is hypocrite while muhammad he says you cannot do adultery muhammad he allow muslim men to sleep with muslim women for three days three nights just a trial if you like to extend, you can extend. That's nice. I mean, Muhammad, obviously, as they call him in the stupid word today, open-minded. But look how open he is in the minded. 
to the point a man and a woman if they agree to have sex together for three days three nights and here in the Muslim translation look how they try to cover the shame they say any man and women agree to temporarily marriage where is the word marriage in Arabic show me to me show me the word marriage where, where do you get the word marriage from ayyuma rajulin wa imra'ata wa faqafa ishratu ma baynahuma thalathu layal there is no marriage a bunch of liars so they put the word marriage to cover the shame do you practice a three days, three night, six trial, Miss Daria, or you don't? So, you know, the Muslims always they try to present to us that, okay, we are the one who cover ourselves. Okay, we cover ourselves, but the Prophet, he ordered Muslim women to give their boobs to strangers. And you have to suckle them. Do you practice that or you are a hypocrite? You don't want to do it no more. There is an Egyptian host. She was speaking to a sheikh in the public TV. Millions of Egyptian are war. You know, Egypt, Egypt is like 90 million people. He said to her, This is what the Prophet said. She said, Okay, I have a I am working in a studio now. So are you saying to me all those men, the decoration, the the the, the the studio the video control the audio control uh, all of those men i have to suckle them from my breast he said absolutely and you can find it in, in youtube he said sure she said so so if a woman she go in the bus or a train and all those men in the train in order to sit with them she have to suckle them all he said yes why you don't do that you take your god word seriously that's really weird that's absolutely false because if you take your god word seriously then you have to do what the prophet said otherwise obviously you are not taking muhammad teaching seriously he ordered you to suckle any man who you want to be with in the bus in the train or even in your house even uh, the mother of the believers Aisha she order she order her nieces let me find the hadith she order her niece nieces and sisters to suckle men in order to get to her room which means if I want to see Aisha and I am a man I have to go and suckle the boobs of uh, her sister or her nieces and then I can see Aisha what do you think do you Muslim today practice breastfeeding for anyone when I enter your home I'm going to visit you tomorrow I will bring a bunch of guys with me so we are Muslim women we don't shake hands but you can shake our boobs. What is this? And you are telling me we take our God word seriously? And by the way, this is was a Quran. This is not only a hadith, but sadly the goat ate the Quran, as you know. I think this goat was sent by Christian Prince. There's a conspiracy behind this goat. She worked for somebody, obviously. So if you want to say to me, oh, this is a fabricated hadith, this was a Quran. Breastfeeding for adult 10 times, 10 times, not only once. You have to suckle the guy 10 different days, not only like in five minutes, he put his head in your lap and you, and by the way, what you will suckle him? Like, do you, what do you think women they have? Like, what, what do you have there? I mean, if I, if, if a man, he put his mouth in your nipples, what he will get? Like, even goats don't have milk all the time. And the women, by the way, Muhammad he ordered her she didn't have a, a, a she is not she did not give a birth to a child so she can the guy second milk so he's sucking what he's sucking just nipples that's sexual and he's a man as you see here the verse of stoning and the breastfeeding an adult 10 times does it say an adult guys or I'm making things up the verse this is verse this is Quran of stoning forget about the stoning now later we will go back and breast 
feeding an adult how many times ten times ten time I mean Muhammad come on I mean make it once okay what about two ten time and the man he have to finish satisfied which mean ten time not only like he put his mouth in his nipple in your nipple and he go back tomorrow and he do the same for a minute no he have to keep cycling until he cannot do it no more until he is satisfied what does that mean I mean since when and what is the logic of this if you want to tell me that this will stop temptation since when if a man he play with the women breast he will not be tempted I mean this is the most stupid ever statement I can I can imagine that somebody claimed that he is coming from God teaching us decency he is ordering a man to suckle the nipples of a woman and that supposedly will make him not to think about her I would like to see Zachary Naik in the lap of somebody Imagine Zachary Naik going to the mosque to teach women so now they have to suckle him all because it's haram you cannot be with them haram and then if we ask Zachary Naik about this uh, for sure Zachary Naik he will get an answer for this because he is a very smart and he have a very like you know his answer come like in the speed of a wind so he will say Brother sister, they're the person in the medical difference, and he always make an accusation against Islam. And actually, it's very true that the Prophet ordered women to give and do breastfeeding. And this is very logical. And I will tell you why. As an example, if you see a woman and she is very beautiful, you keep looking at her, and she could look at you. I mean, cut the crap. Come get my nipples and second them until you are satisfied. After that, you will not look no more because you are done. Thank you very much. This is the reason. Cut the crap, suckle them. Get it to the end. Why you want to waste your time? Just go to the end, suckle them. You are looking at my breast. Why you are wasting your time? Why you are staring? Let us do it. So this is the logic. And now after he do it ten times, he is not interested no more. Uh, by the way, Zach and Nike did not say that. I most of the answers I say for you, this is just uh, I create in the moment. I don't think he said that. I just I just said that. I just made it up. But sometimes actually I copy him for things he say like, "Why a woman? She isn't a prophet." And he said because of her ass. So, where is Islam? You bring me a guy who is trying to grow a beard, Zach and Nike. He put all kinds of fertilizer in his shin, and nothing is growing. And the second he talk, he spit at everybody. And yet, you Muslim, you don't even listen how to how stupid, how silly his answers is. And like, like, wow, brother, he is so good. So what do you think, Muslims? So we are people who have been order women to cover themselves, but women, our women, they should suckle you. By, by the way, guys, I'm thinking to go to a suckling trip to Saudi Arabia. Actually, I told you before, I wanted to open a project in the city of Sin, Las Vegas. Actually, I want to go to Las Vegas, by the way. Not because I don't do gambling, but the best thing about the, the this city is the food. I mean, do what is right. They have a nice food there. Man, it's very cheap. So I want to open a business in Las Vegas, and I want to call it Drive Through Breast Breastfeeding. And you can imagine, brother, how much money we will make. But sadly, until now, we did not get any sponsor. drive it through I mean you get a bunch of you, you import some you know uh, employee who they are uh, following Allah alhamdulillah and then you know like let me explain to you I mean it's very hard for you to understand my project I will explain to you maybe I can get some sponsor for my project that's the whole point okay uh, I don't know how many of you is 
is willing to sponsor this project because it's I believe it's fantastic project I, I know I, this is what I believe okay so if we go uh, okay let us true try this Uh, I'm just opening the drawing tool. You know me, I'm very good in drawing. Okay. So if we if we open a business, brother, uh, we can open like uh, we have a wall, like a drive through in the side of the building, and we have like open windows like this, you know. Mm, I think this is too far. But anyway, I think they have big ones anyway. So uh, and I, actually, even we can make uh, like floors, like floor number one, floor number two, people drive, and floor number two, they, we have under, under, under windows here, like, you know, uh, depend in the size too, like, you know, big size, small size, depend what you like. And then people, they drive their car, and they go through uh, the road, which is uh, fantastic. So let us say you are driving your uh, a blue uh, Mercedes, all right, and then this is the car. Okay, this is your car, and then you put your head out, and here we have, uh, we need to draw the pimples, the pimples, nipples, nipples, I mean, my English is funny, sorry guys, it's, it, they, look, they look like pimples, by the way, but anyway, here, so you drive your car, brother, and, uh, 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 you know, you go and, uh, like, you get your needs from Sakhalin, and uh, you finish fast and you go. I mean, and you can do it. We give you an, a package of 10 times cycling based on the profit teaching. This is a prophet of God. Hmm? It doesn't look like a Mercedes. Yeah, I, 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 my friend, I wasn't trying to draw a Mercedes. I was trying to draw an elephant. Yeah. Brother. I have a cross eyes, by the way. According to Imam Ali, if you, if you, uh, uh, if you have sex with your wife in the wrong way, and if you look at her, <clears throat> behind your son will have a cross eyes mm. I mean science explained Islam explain anything you want so when this lady she says you know uh, hypocrisy and etc I mean you none of you Muslims are following Islam none of you not only not only you live between the, the non-muslims you ask them even to pay for your food most of them who come as an immigrant uh, you know there's a guy in australia they have a documentary about him he have four wives illegally and he have many kids and he never did a job all his life in, in in australia for more than 20 years he is getting paid by the welfare so not only you live between them but they feed you So don't give me this, uh, you know, this fantasy answer. The answer you gave me is just a fantasy. And Islam is not practical. It's a stupid cult. And, you know, another, another, like, just to show you how stupid this cult is. As an example, Muhammad, he made Hajj. Hajj is to go uh, to visit the Kaaba and to go around it. Which is very weird. Okay, so now we go to Hajj. And Muhammad, he said, a Muslim, he have to go at least once in his lifetime. Once in his lifetime. Okay. Now the Muslim, they say, they have, they claim that they are 1.6. And ne next week, they will be 2 billion. Just wait. Yeah. I don't think even they are a billion. I don't think they are even one Muslims. If every Muslim have to go once in his lifetime to Mecca, and not only Mecca, to go around this small, tiny space, 
how you can do that how you can do that let us say the average of a Muslim to live is 60 years so you have 60 years as a maximum opportunity to go and visit the Kaaba once in your life time how you can do that so if we say any anybody is good for you in, in mathematics if we say we have 1.6 billion as they claim and we divide all those to 60 years hmm? what we will have every year should visit Mecca somebody can give me the number if we have 1.6 billion and we divide that to 60 years this is the maximum you know some people might live 70 you know, some people might live 80 but the average let us say make it 70 if you want the Kaaba will not fit even for a 1% so you will not have a chance or opportunity to visit the Kaaba so when Muhammad he made those rules he was talking about a bunch of guys around him who they are 50 60 people go around the Kaaba And now you go to the Kaaba and you die because people you step on you every year like this uh, after many years and by the help of the American and software and cameras and security now they were able to organize and only a few hundreds every year they die when they go around the Kaaba because the second you fell down during the Hajj time you cannot stand up that said people step on you as you see look how crowded it is in a small tiny place so the second you walk you fall down in the ground you are dead because the one behind you he cannot he, he don't meant to stop step on you but he cannot stop the waves is pushing they are going in a circle nothing in this cult is practical how many of you Muslims today believe that if you kiss a black stone, this black stone will forgive your sin? Do you? When the last time you kissed the black stone? Hmm? How many did drink camel urine as the prophet he ordered? How many of you color your hair red as the prophet he used to do? How many of you, when he clean his private part, he dry his hand in the wall? This is Sunnah. Muhammad, each time he do, you know, he dry his hands in the wall. So I'm assuming in the bedroom of Muhammad, there is a big Picasso painting. How many? So, lady from Turkey, with my respect to your answer uh, trial, you know, you give it a try, but it's a big time failure. You fail. You see, Christians, Christians, like Jesus told them, if you pray, you don't go and make a make a story of it. Uh, somebody says, so why we go to church, by the way? Like yesterday, I was saying what Jesus said, that you go to your closet. The church is not just a place for worship. A church is a place where you share your experience, you share your thought, and we still we believe in the powerful uh, uh, prayer of a, of a group. So that is different kind of prayer. When when you are having a personal relationship with the Lord, you can pray anywhere, anyhow. You can pray driving, you can pray standing, you can pray even when you are washing your dishes. The Lord is not a pagan God who wants you to stand and sit in a certain way. And there's a time to do it. Muhammad, he wanted to occupy the life of the Muslims. So they will not think about anything. You see, there is a there is a terrorism. Terrorism is not only in jihad in Islam. Terrorism is terrifying the brain from thinking about something useful. As an example, when Muhammad uh, he told the Muslims, before you enter the bathroom, you have to say certain prayer otherwise shaitan he will play with your bum 
That is terrorism. And I'll explain to you. I terrify you that if you don't say this, somebody will take a screwdriver and he will play with your bum. I mean, your bum, sorry. So now, you cannot enter the bathroom unless you say the prayer. So now, your brain is occupied even when you want to go to the bathroom. So Muhammad successfully was able to terrify you by his terror fiction that if you don't do this, something wrong will happen to you. So now you are terrified. You are terrified to eat without doing a certain thing, to have sex. Even he said, before you have sex, you have to say a certain prayer, otherwise shaitan will round himself around the private part of the man, he will be doing the wife. And the son will be the son of shaitan. So now what happened? Everything you do in your life, you have to do some practice. Otherwise, there is a consequence, which all of it is funny. I mean, I don't mind if Muhammad was saying, uh, well, we have to pray always to God. And this is not the point. The point is, he terrify you because he don't want you to think. Because if you think, you get smarter. You will find that Muhammad is a false prophet. So now, the first thing in the morning you wake up, you have to stop praying. And then after two hours, you have to pray again. And then after three hours, you have to pray again. So the whole day is occupied. Before you go to the bathroom, you have to pray. And before you do have sex, you have to pray. And even when you shake your private part, you have to do it according to Muhammad. So he occupy your day so you don't have a space or a place to think of what you are doing, if it's right or wrong. So Islam focus in the practice not in God and the practice was for a reason so you will not think you will not be able to breathe what I should do there is a video on YouTube you can search for it about a Muslim Sheikh he is teaching you if you don't pray before you go to the bathroom what shaitan he will do to you and you will see in the face of this man how much serious he is Let me see if I can find the video. And you know, the funny, uh, when this guy, he speak, <clears throat> uh, the Muslim, they start laughing. The Muslim, they start laughing. And then the guy, he said to them, brother, the prophet said, the prophet said, this is hadith, brother, which means don't laugh. That's what the prophet said. So he says in the video, like you think you want to go inside the bathroom for five minutes, but then you end sitting there for 20, 30 minutes. Because why? Because you try to push it and I, I, I caught him. Eh, eh. But the shaitan, he do what? Ooh, ooh. He's pushing it up. <laughs> so even your poo-poo now is under the threat and the conspiracy of shaitan. Shaitan going inside your anus, not only is playing with it, and you have to believe in this. So the reason Muhammad he put too many rules is just to make you stupid. Not don't think. Never, never, ever think. And by the way, the Shia and the Sunni they are the same thing. I mean, Shia they have more crazy stuff. As an example, the Shia, uh, you know. If you speak during sex, Shaitan will, uh, sorry, uh, your son will come born a mute. If you look at your wife, uh, this is Shia and Sunni, they, they share. Uh, your private, the private part from behind, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, your son might be blind or even he might be a gay. <clears throat> uh, if you wear a black shoe, your private part will never stand. Even if you play the anthem, you have to wear a yellow shoe. So Shia, they have a lot of garbage too. But the whole purpose of those things is just to keep your mind occupied with silly, stupid stuff so you will not have a chance to think, to be smart. 
so when you see Muslims doing what they do first they do to be hypocrite which means I have to pray because people are watching me I have to go to the mosque because my neighbor will see I did not go actually in Saudi Arabia if you don't go to the mosque for three days the police will come to your door and they will question why if you don't give a logical reason they will take you to court to question if you left Islam or not because why you did not go for three days you have to prove that you are sick something happened Uh, Ramadan is a different story. We can talk about it in different occasion. But anyway, uh, Muslims are the last one to follow the religion. Even they, they try to make it sound like they are following the religion. I go to the store. I see a woman wearing hijab, but she is wearing a pant. That is haram. And hijab is haram. You have to wear a veil. Totally a veil, not a hijab. Everything you do is far away from your cult. You see, these days women she are wearing a, a, a burkini, and they want to swim. That alone is a big shame, according to Muhammad. There is no such a thing. So what the Muslims they do, they try to find uh, like a, a U-turn around their religion, so they can do what you do or other people do. But they claim it is different. It's not. It's a, it's a, you know. As an example, there is a halal sex toy stores. Halal what? Halal sex toy stores. And actually, this is halal because I can show you the hadith where the imam explained that a Muslim woman she can use sex toys and no problem with that. Even she can cut a private part of a animal and use it. I made a video about it before. You can watch it. Uh, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Look at this answer. A woman she is asking that she bought a sex toy, a Muslim woman. She bought a sex toy, toy and she want to know. Uh, Oh no, this is what is that a woman or to uh, I recently read it in your side that six toys is a principle and It was a bit surprise to know the answer. Please clarify <laughs> I mean we are very decent but six toys is okay Hmm It's a principle to have six toys and if you go let me search for the the store you know uh, you can search on google it's there is many stores are halal six toys halal six toys uh I found this one and uh, you know, like there's many actually halal vibration uh, exp what exploring an x-rated Muslim sex shop <laughs> yeah it's complete com in, in total agreement with Sharia law brother yeah but we Muslims are very very conservative hmm. so here the Muslims you know I mean you see, Islam, the second, like you see the outside, is like a, a tree, but inside the worm ate it. From outside, you see people wearing white clothes, praying, women covering their hair. But if you go, if you if you live between them, you will see how much corrupt this society. I never saw corrupt society as Islamic society all my life. And actually, this is one of the reasons I am here in America. Everything is corrupt. But nobody speaks about God more than do. 
nobody swear by their God more than they do Mo nobody mentioned the name of God more than they do all day long but they are the most corrupt people ever you can imagine actually even in the Middle East and you can ask any Muslim and those who speak Arabic here the Muslims they will say to you they say eat in the house of a, uh, 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 a Muslim but sleep in the house of a Christian because those the only one who will not betray you the only one you can trust sleep in the house of a Christian sleep you can eat different place you want to have someone you trust who will not kill you when you are dead sleep that is the Christians the caliphate of Muhammad was killed by Muslims the grandsons of Muhammad was killed by Muslims all Muslim leaders was killed by Muslims very corrupt the one who we read his Quran Uthman the one who collected the Quran the Muslims they cut his head and they play with it belly ball and not only that before they killed him they took the hair of his beard one by one and not only that after they killed him they drag drag his body in the street and not only that they refused to bury him in a grave and not only that the one who bury him they stole his dead body which is thrown in the road like a dog and they bury it between a Jewish graves secretly that is the truth if Islam is corrupt since the time of Muhammad and since the time of Uthman and Abu Bakr and etc Aisha the wife of Muhammad she took an army and she she caused the death of tens of thousands of Muslims to kill Ali this is Aisha the one we say she was a kid because now she became a woman she took an army imagine she went all the way to Iraq and she was slaughtering Muslims as a chicken and then she lost the war and Ali he captured her and he sent her back to Mecca that is Islam even in the time of Muhammad the Muslims accused their prophet that he was a thief and he stole an underwear so we can tell what kind of a quality the prophet is what kind of a prophet he was accused by his followers that he stole an underwear and this is a chapter 3 verse number 161 if you read here the translation it doesn't say really anything you know the false translation in Arabic it says وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِي أَنْ يَغُلْ يَغُلْ mean to steal to be a steal and a fraud so the Muslims themselves accuse their prophet to be a fraud you believe it if you don't believe me here we go let us open the website of the King of Jordan which is really hard I mean the King of Jordan is from the family of Muhammad by the way that explains why he is extremely corrupt I mean I never saw a corrupt family as much as this family and that explained why he claimed that he is from Muhammad family if you go by the way just uh, somebody remind me uh, uh, we have our my book in Spanish the uh, translation for deception of Allah and Quran and science both are already in Amazon so if you are a person who speaks Spanish please tell your friends about it um, so they can read it so we have two books already out in Amazon in Spanish uh, let us see chapter 6 verse number 68 I will put it in the screen in a second hold on <clears throat> oh this is a sorry not 668 this is the mockery one uh, we should go to uh, chapter 3 sorry 161 <clears throat> and here we will read the following and remember we are going to show you what Muslims they say about this the verse what is the reason for the verse to be mentioned read with me carefully please when some red velvet cloth went missing in the day of Badr 
some of the people began people who people the Muslims began to say perhaps the Prophet took it which means the, the Prophet he stole it this is why the word Yagul he stole it so here are we have a bunch of thieves all of them are Muslims fighting over the theft because they are better what is better you know they are attacking people to steal their money so when they attack they have booty and the booty now there is something missing from the booty it's a red velvet a piece of a clothes mostly it's an underwear uh, at that time there was not really underwear like there's something it's like a short you wear you can call it underwear so this red velvet uh, missing and who is the one who took it it is Muhammad and why the Muslim they say that because he have a habit to steal the best of the booty and look what that says the Quran says it's not for a prophet to be a fraud which means the Muslims accuse him to be a fraud this is what kind of Muslims we are talking about in the time of Muhammad if this companion the best of the Muslims they are accusing their leader their prophet that he stolen underwear so why you're upset from a Christian prince you Muslims the best of the Muslims the companion are a bunch of thieves accusing the big thief that he stolen underwear which is already stolen they are, they are fighting over the theft and by the way until now the underwear is missing because if you read this verse by the way look how funny this verse is this verse saying that the Prophet he did not stole did not steal the underwear okay why Allah don't tell us who took it I mean we are talking about God 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 is talking so look how silly even the Quran somebody says the Prophet he took it Allah he sent a message a pro, uh, an angel and he wrote a Quran from the seven galaxies all the way down to the earth which is a small tiny piece of dust just because of underwear Allah he talked because of underwear and to say what it's not Muhammad he took it what about you tell us who took it <laughs> you know what I mean I mean imagine I am supposedly God and I want to save the ass of my prophet so I say to you it's not him who took it what about you tell us who took it that not only will stop him from accusing him we will get the thief So what this is blah 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 about he did not take it tell, tell us who took it obviously it's Muhammad actually this verse confirmed that Muhammad is the one who took it because if Allah is the one is talking he should tell us who took it this verse confirmed that the missing underwear taken by Muhammad otherwise why Allah did not say to us Unt until now the underwear is missing if you go to the FBI page in Saudi Arabia, there's two two things is missing: the goat who ate the Quran, if you remember, and uh, this uh, underwear. And by the way, there's a big reward if you uh, uh, if you find it, you know, in case there's a picture for the goat eating the Quran. So it was a nice try from you Muslim to talk about hypocrisy and we Muslims we follow Islam more than others we follow our religion none of you follow Islam because let us make it a summarize for what we said a Muslim is not allowed to live in a Muslim countries according to Muhammad a Muslim is not allowed to listen to music to watch TV even to use a phone even to have a ring a bell in his house to have a picture how many of you Muslims have pictures the one who have a picture in his house do you know what Allah will do to him? Allah in the judgment day, he will bring him and he will ask him to breathe into it. Like he will put the picture in front of you, says, okay, okay, bring it to life. Okay, you create a picture, okay, bring it to life, okay. <laughs> and Allah will send you to hell. Severely, you will be punished. Do you have a passport? You have a picture. Do you have a phone? The whole phone is pictures. Do you have a computer? Are you watching YouTube? Do you watch movies? Do you have a picture for your daughter, your mother, your sister, your wife? It's haram. 
Allah will punish you severely. Do you play music? Allah will make you a pig if you do so. Right? So, you know, I mean, when 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 they say things to us, it's it's kind of funny, I mean, what what they what they say. And by the way, here Muhammad he proved to us again that he is a false prophet because if if you watch a movie or you play a music or you sing you you watch singing girls Allah will make you a pig and a monkey well how come Allah did not make any of you a pig and a monkey yet all Muslim words are watching TV and watching movies if Muhammad is truthful that Allah will make you a pig and a monkey if you listen to music Hmm? He will make you a pig for listening to music and a monkey. <sighs> I mean, this time is really funny. All right. A Muslim is asking, uh, somebody, sorry, and the, the text is asking about Bilal. Bilal. This is the hadith, my friend. Bilal, the Muslims, they say that Bilal, he was freed by the Prophet. There is nowhere it says that. As you see, this is after the death of Muhammad. Bilal is asking Abu Bakr to free him. Because simply the one who bought him is Abu Bakr. He is a property of Abu Bakr. So Bilal, he said to Abu Bakr, if you have bought me for yourself, then keep me for yourself. But if you have bought me for your sake of Allah, then leave me for Allah work. And why the man here, the poor man, is begging for his uh, freedom? Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. And I'm going to go and listen to some music, hoping that by tomorrow Allah will turn me into a pig or a monkey. A monkey. Eat banana. Jump from tree to tree. Uh, by the way, even Muslims believe that monkeys are Muslims. Even they believe uh, that there's a monkey, she committed adultery. Shame on you. I mean, unbelievable, disgusting female monkey. A female monkey, she committed adultery. You believe it? How dare you? And you are a Muslim, you do that? You are a Muslim and monkey, and yet you do sexual intercourse, not Sharia law? Read this hadith with me. During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, I saw a she-monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stone in it. Because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse, and I too stoned it along with them. Uh, my friend, let me tell you something. There is one thing I am sure from that you are the one is stoned. That is true. So this Abdul, he wanna confirm that monkeys are Muslims and they are practicing Sharia law. Actually, if you have my book. Six and Allah, the story is different from this. This is here, they give you the headline. The story is supposedly there's a uh, there's a, a, a female monkey, her her husband, quote unquote, was sleeping and on over her arm under the tree. I mean, look how romantic. You are a chimpanzee, and your wife, decent Muslim chimpanzee wife. She is, uh, by the way, I'm not saying Muslims are chimpanzees. No, the, the hadith says that this monkey, this monkey, we're talking about the monkey. This monkey is a Muslim. <laughs> so this Muslim monkey, she was uh, next to her husband and he sleep in the top of her arm. And then another monkey, he come from behind a tree and obviously he's good looking, you know. And... I mean, she could not resist the temptation. 
and most likely maybe he showed her a banana or something I'm not sure what he showed her uh, maybe he have a big banana and you know size does matter so he showed her like <laughs> and she could not resist the temptation so she took the arm they took her arm from under the head of her husband head and again if you want to read the reference you can go to my book six and Allah you can have it have two volumes so she took off her hand from under his head without him feeling it and then she went behind the tree and they did like you know ah, eh, ah, bing bong bing bong you know and then after she finished she got back and she put her head she put her arm under the head of the husband again but by doing that he woke up and he started sniffing her <laughs> And you know where he sniff I'm not going to tell you exactly he was sniffing there exactly there mm -hmm. yeah yeah there so he sniffed her there and he smelled the sperm so he starts screaming takbir <laughs> takbir <laughs> like you know this is a, a monkey way you know jihad Allah Akbar so all the the groups the monkeys they gather and to question what happened and he told them my uh, my beautiful uh, wife she did it sit on me so the big monkey he gathered the Muslims and they look for the female monkey and they stone her I don't know what happened to the male monkey by the way until now he's missing And this is by the way, this is a true story I was there I Think this guy he saw a monkey throwing uh, throwing rocks at each other monkeys. They, yeah, they do that so the guy he thought They are stoning somebody for adultery <laughs> But the funny about their story is how they fabricate. I mean, she was she, her, her, he was sleeping under over her arm under the tree. I mean, okay, what is that? All of this, and you are a witness for it. And this is in Sahir Bukhari, brother. This must be a true story. And by the way, this is why I'm saying to you: if you're ever thinking about dating a monkey, well, you have a reason now not to do that. That is a rough. The rough is better. Obviously, monkeys they cheat. Hmm? Date uh, an elephant. Uh, monkeys are not good. I don't know. A mo uh, uh, by the way, what we understand from this uh, hadith here that those monkeys are not only Muslims; they are conservative, not like the Muslims today. They don't practice stoning to death no more. Those are uh, mujahideen. Those are ISIS monkeys. They follow Islam step by step. So look, and I saw a show, mo show, mo show uh, a she monkey surrounded by numbers of monkeys. Those num numbers of monkeys, those are the decent believers, not just anyone. We should show respect to them. I mean, they are they are Orthodox, they are Sunni, and all of them they were stoned. Not even one of them is watching. All is sharing in the in the in the justice. Because and look at the because here. I mean, because we should have changed the color because this is something very beautiful. I mean, this guy he is very he's a he's a person of logic and reason. He did not say to us they are stoning her only. No, no, no. Because, I mean, come on. So here, because of what? Because she committed illegal sexual intercourse. What a crazy woman! I'm shame on you. You are a monkey and yet you are cheating. I thought all my life I thought monkeys are decent. And now we discover that monkeys they cheat. I mean what we would do now? Women they cheat, monkeys female they cheat. I mean what is that? We men we are suffering now. We will marry from who? Anyway, all of this is a true story. Anyway, uh, I think we have enough for today, guys. And um, I hope you did enjoy it. This video will not stay long in my page, so please download it. In a few hours from now, it will be taken down. So please, Fadi, he said he have speak to you. All right, hold on. He have sent you a call with his shake about Muhammad dead. Please listen. Okay, hold on. I thought we are done. Look like we are not done yet. Hold on.
let us see what uh, this guy this guy you know he is suffering a lot he might leave Islam very soon so he called his Sheikh to answer me to refute me in something let us see the Skype my Skype is not open so I did not see it <clears throat> Let us see what his shake he said. And why his shake don't call me? I mean, what is that recording? <coughs> you open your Skype, you you find tons of. Uh... No, he did not leave me anything. I don't have any call from Fadi. Where is his call? No, I don't, I don't have his call. I have zero call from Fatih or anyone Muslim. Anyway, uh, I know what he's talking about. I have zero message from any Muslim. I have a message from the guy who left Islam yesterday. I have a message from the the guy who left Islam a few days ago. Uh, they are just asking me even just to call. That's all. And there's no other messages from Muslims. So I'm not sure what he said. Ask him. Uh, anyway guys, I think we have enough for today. I want to say thank you and um, again Don't forget to download the video immediately and share it with your friends and again Don't trust monkeys if you are a male and you are looking for a wife. Obviously, they are not good Anyone can come with a bigger banana and that's it all the love between you and her is gone Imagine I mean imagine how painful it was for the chimpanzee. He loved her He loved her from all his heart She used he used to clean the fleas from her hair. He remember all the good moments between them under the tree, and he is picking up the fleas and he is eating it. He remember how he used to sniff her. He remember the moment he found a cockroach in her ear. He remember how one day she was screaming because there is a bee she did bite her, stink her. And he uh, was licking that location to make her feel better. And then one day, he go just to sleep, just a nap. He just closed his eyes for a second. And look what she did. I mean, how we can trust monkeys after this day? I'm so disappointed. I was going to join a dating website for monkeys. But thanks to the prophet and his followers, now I know that this is not a good choice. Obviously, they are not trustworthy. So now we have to switch to something else. Sorry. I know it's very sad news for you. Many of you like monkeys. And actually, many of you maybe look like monkeys. <laughs> and this is why you are not married like me. <laughs> what a stupid cult. Unbelievable. Oh, boy. And don't worry, even if you look like me, I mean, which is really scary. Don't worry. I mean, it's okay. Somebody will like you one day. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. But you don't have to date a monkey at the end of the day. I mean, come on. This is too much. You know, you are, you are being very much too open-minded, brother. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until I see you again, Christ is Lord. This time is sitting and stupid cult. And we get it busted every day. See you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.